Your first step is to go to voicethread.com, log in, and then if you click on your account, you'll see you have a number of options. Um, the two you're most interested in for this project are either to begin your project, in which case you want create, or if you've started it and just need to get back into it to edit it, you would click on My Voice. Once you've found and saved your images to a folder somewhere on your computer, it's time to upload them. So your first step, of course, is to upload. It will ask you to find those images and you'll locate them. A little trick to uploading them all at one time is if you click on the first one while holding the shift key down on the keyboard and keep holding the shift key and then click on the last image in the sequence of images, you can select them all and upload them all at one time. Once all your images are uploaded, um, the next thing you want to do is make sure they're in the right sequence because when you start recording, they will record in that sequence. Of course, you can always resequence them coming back here to the editing pane, but sometimes it's just best to sequence them correctly the first time. So um, all of your images, regardless of how many you have uploaded, are all um, movable simply by dragging and dropping in the new order. So try and get them in the right sequence. But remember, you can always reorder them later as well, even if you've already commented on them. Also, you'll notice for each image, if you click on an image, you'll be able to give that image or slide a title, and you could even give it a link or a, a URL if you wanted a link to be visible that the visitor could click on to go and look at that resource that you're referring to. That's purely optional, and it depends on the project, of course. You also don't you don't want to forget to give your project a title and description. So when it's indexed, it doesn't say in untitled. Now that you've uploaded your images and given them titles and put them in the correct sequence, it's time to record. So one at a time, click on individual images and add your voice narration. Remember you're going for a conversational tone. So even if you might have a recorded script, it doesn't sound like you're reading. You're also going to hear your recordings play back. Be critical when you listen to them. If you're not loud enough or you are not animated enough, you know, don't save it. Or if you did save it, delete it and go back and try again. Also, don't forget to leave a way for your audience to respond. Avoid questions that have yes, no answers, and think about questions that are a bit more divergent and are open-ended, and give the, your audience uh, a more meaningful way to participate. When you click record for the first time, you'll see this little dialog box from Adobe Flash coming up, and it's going to ask that you give the web browser permission and VoiceThread to use your microphone. So yes, you want to click allow when you see that. While you're recording, you also have access to the annotation pen tool, and you can tell it by its the color wheel of different colors. And as you're speaking, you can use the pen tool to mark up the image um, if it's appropriate for what you're presenting. You don't always need it, but just know it's there and you can use it um, and just experiment with it and see how it works. When you're finished doing all your voice recordings and you're ready to share your project, before you get the share link, look at the very bottom left and you're going to see a button that says Playback Options. If you open that up, this gives you some preferences in terms of how you would like your presentation to play when someone uh, visits it. Uh, these are my preferred playback options, waiting only one second between slides. And uh, I want it to start playing automatically when the person visits it. And that final share slide, it's kind of personal, uh, but I typically will not show that unless I want people to reshare it again. So you can decide what you want to do there, click Save, and then you can move on to the next step. To share your final project, remember you don't want to copy the address that's in the address bar of the internet browser. You want to come to this button or go to step three and share, and you want to click that says get a link to share, and it will generate a unique link that's only for the purposes of sharing. Before you copy that share link, you also want to make sure, and by default these should be selected, but we want to allow anyone to view this project, as well as anyone to comment. 
Uh, however, do remember that only people who are signed in with a VoiceThread account can comment. Anyone can view, only VoiceThread members can comment. Also, you'll notice some other options that can be helpful as a classroom teacher, all depending on the context and the age of the children. It allows you to moderate any additional comments, and it's up to you whether you would like your project viewable on the main browse page of VoiceThread. For this project, that, that doesn't matter. Finally, one last option which can be helpful when you're in the classroom and particularly with younger students who can't have their own accounts or if you don't have a classroom teacher or school-wide account that allows you to make accounts for your own students. Often teachers are limited by using their personal accounts with their students and VoiceThread gives you the opportunity to make additional identities within your single teacher account so that when your students come up to add their comments and participate in given voice threads, they won't be represented by your avatar. You can give each student their unique avatar. So before they make their comment, they simply switch identities and they pick their own identity within your account and they leave their comment. And this way, every unique commenter is represented with a unique identity.